So the other week I really struggled to unlock and lock my garage door. So in this week's video I'm showing you how I change it. So I tried and tried to get this lock working, even with WD-40. No, it's got to come out, come on! And it just looked bent, which makes me think I've accidentally warped it while opening and closing it for my DIY patio recently. And you'll notice this is a two lever lock on an outer building, but apparently my dad said it's more like a shed lock, and that is how we've been using this garage. So I knew nothing on how to replace this, but after watching a YouTube video, I found that I needed to measure the back set, which is the edge of the door, to the centre of the keyhole. And mine was 45mm, which apparently you then need 65mm. And then I measured the centre of the handle to the keyhole, which was roughly about 60 to 70 millimetres. But I found this 64 millimetre one from Tool Station for £5.98, and I held it against my existing one just to see if everything more or less lined up. And I'd say it did, apart from the sash lock was slightly lower, but I did get a new keep to fix to the door frame. So to remove it, I first unscrewed the lock faceplate, which is two screws, top and bottom. I just used a hand screwdriver for this and then worked on unscrewing the handles and then popped out the bar in the middle and then I just removed the old lock which wasn't that much of a hardship because I'd seen other videos using pliers to get it out then to install the new one so I tried pushing it in and it was a bit tight and the screw holes no longer matched and it was slightly taller than the chiselled area for the old one and you can see while I'm holding them face to face that the new one was about 5mm deeper. I noticed that the latches were in completely the opposite direction. So my next job was to turn it around so I could close the door. And I did that by unscrewing two tiny screws with a sort of spring attachment. And I thought this would be so easy. And once I'd unscrewed them, I rotated it and then started screwing it back. So I tried to hold the spring mechanism with my finger. It didn't really work. So I used this bluntish knife just to hold it in place while I screwed it back and that worked so much better. But it was quite tough screwing it back just so the latch would just open and close freely. I got there in the end but I was worried about breaking it. So once I'd done that I held it to where the old lock used to be and I was very nervous about using a chisel for this just in case there did any damage and I only needed to remove 5mm. So I just used a screwdriver with a wood drill bit and just ground the bottom of it down and I just think this felt safer for me. Yes. Now something I should mention is I am using a three lever lock here and the only reason I didn't go for a five lever one which apparently is more secure is again because I was really worried about chiseling too much and completely ruining one of the frames of the garage door that my dad made. But now I've done this I might just go ahead with it but if you are changing a lock for a house then a few of you told me that some insurance companies will only cover you if you've got a five lever lock but I found this isn't really an issue for an outer building but of course it's probably going to depend what you're going to keep in there as well so once I'd got it in and noticed my holes all lined up I screwed back the faceplate, popped in the turning handle bar, whatever you call it and then screwed back the handles and because the new lock was slightly different I needed to remove the old keep on the door frame and pop the new one on so once I'd done that I closed it and I tried to lock it but it wouldn't turn because the keep was in the wrong place so to get around it I went on the inside of the door closed it and then mark with a pencil at the top of the bottom of where the lock went. So this is when I used a chisel to remove any wood that was blocking the lock from closing. And then I held the new keep back into place and noticed I needed to raise it about 5mm. So while it's in place I scored along the top of it with a Stanley knife and used a chisel to gently remove it so the keep would be set back. And then finally, I screwed the new keep back into place. Yay! And then tore off any of the protective film that was covering the brass. So for a first attempt, I was very happy of how this went. So that's it for this one. If you do anything differently, feel free to comment below and hopefully it will help someone doing their research. 
and if you liked it don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye!